Welcome to the ISO Show, dispelling myths and sharing tips for success to improve your business with ISO standards with your host, Mel Blackmore. Hello and welcome to the ISO Show. I'm delighted to be joined by Steve Mason again. Hi, Steve. Hi, Mel. <laughs> Great. We are going to be covering a topic within ISO 27001 that does cause quite a lot of debate and questions when we start implementing ISO 27001, the information security standard within organisations, and that is around clear desk and clear screen. So what do we mean by that? Well, Steve's going to explain the do's and don'ts and hopefully dispel some of the myths around it as well because I know that when we've been into organisations in the past sometimes there is a lot of worry and concern that we're going to get rid of all of the paperwork and you can't have any scrap of paper on your desk but yeah, that's, that's right, not actually yeah. true is it? And, no, no. And obviously it depends in different businesses I mean obviously you've got some creative organisations where they have to have drawings and specifications exactly, on their desk yeah. we wouldn't expect them to be working without them so yeah so steve what are some of those myths around clear desk and clear screen well i think you started from the right point there if we think about clear desk people do get this impression that we've got to have a, almost a clinically clean desk at every point in the day but that's not practical this is when we start turning security into a sort of straitjacket of fort knox and um, really if you're going down that route you're going to soon get people's backs up and they're not going to sort of follow the policies. Clear desk is quite simple. It's about understanding what's on your desk and what's confidential on your desk. And when you leave your desk for any period of time, it's to make sure that confidential information is locked away somewhere, perhaps in a drawer, in a pedestal or in a cupboard. It doesn't mean that if you get up to go and pick something up from the photocopier or printer, that you've just suddenly got to lock it away in the drawer. That's, again, going down that uh, silly route of turning in security into something you really shouldn't be. I, I guess where people fall down on clear desk is often we have these sort of trays sitting on the desk about four deep, and it's got all our little documents in. You can guarantee somewhere in one of those trays there's something confidential. It's been put in there by somebody or even by ourselves. And you can guarantee if you pull one of those out and you start looking through it, you think, crikey, why is that in there? Where did that come from? So that's the thing to start looking at. So when you think about clear desk, start with your trays. Clear everything out that shouldn't really be in there. Certainly if it ended up in there about six months ago. Get that out of the way. Once you've done that, then just sort of think about how you work on a daily basis. Once you're working, you've got all your stuff on your desk. As you say, there might be drawings and documents. There might be plans that you've got there. That's fine. Carry on working with those on your desk. Even when the assessor comes round, he may or she may see you with that on your desk. You might want to think about when the assessor gets there, just turning something over if you think it's a little bit too confidential. So obviously there are different risks associated with different types of information within an organisation. So, I mean, what are the risks of having confidential information just lying around on your desk? The risks, I think, come from, uh, first of all, it might be that somebody sees a document, it might be somebody who works in your business, sees a document on your desk and sort of uh, casually reads it and just might bring that up in conversation elsewhere. They might just, oh, can't guess what I've just seen, you know. Mm. So it could be um, a salary review. Yeah, so it, it could, could be about not necessarily sensitive information concerning a client. It could be sensitive information concerning a fellow colleague. Very much so, mm. yeah. Or as you say, it could be to do with a business, you know. It might be that uh, somebody says, oh, I've just read that we've won that contract with XYZ. Well, that contract you've just won with XYZ may not be public knowledge. And so somebody passing it on to a friend who then pass it on to another friend will soon get it out into the public domain. Mm. And that's really what you're trying to protect yourself against. Okay, so it's the protecting the company against the risks associated with information getting into the wrong hands then, exactly, basically. Exactly, exactly, yes. Yeah. Mm. And bear in mind, none of this is ever really malicious. It is very rare that information leakage is malicious. Most of it is just really people not really thinking about what they're doing and consequently just uh, think, that, you know, oh, it's a good thing to chat about, you know, I'm interested in the business, and they pass some information they shouldn't be passing on. Mm. So it's just people perhaps being a little bit thoughtless 
rather than malicious. Mm. So it's not just desks though either, is it? it can be meeting rooms as well, can't it? Absolutely. In fact, I recommend to all my clients they have a meeting room protocol set up on the, perhaps the door and that whoever is actually running the meeting is responsible for that protocol. So that protocol would be a case of removing all the flip chart uh, information that's been gathered in that meeting, making sure that any handouts in that meeting have all been gathered up, especially if people left them behind, and really just checking for any confidential information that may have just been forgotten or left behind, so that when you leave that meeting place, it is as spartan as it should be. Mm. You know, So anybody else coming into the next meeting won't pick up any information they shouldn't have access to. Mm. Yeah, because I came across a case, it was a number of years ago now, where a meeting had taken place Mm. with a company, and then later on that day, there was a competing company that came in, Yes, and they saw the plans for the campaign for the first company, and uh, the head of sales and marketing for that organisation wasn't happy at all, because obviously they were disclosing a competitor's campaign. Obviously, it wasn't done intentionally. No, that's right. But that right. definitely you know, could have affected uh, their reputation. Yeah, I've even heard cases where businesses have walked out. You know, They've seen a competitor's name on a mm. board, a flip chart, mm. and as soon as they've seen the competitor's name, they've asked the question, are you doing business with that uh, company? Mm. And when they find out that you are, they, they just then get up and say, sorry, we won't do business with you then. Mm. Because they're thinking about the risk of their information being shared with a competitor. And so uh, you could lose business over it. Mm. So just to reiterate that point, then you mentioned that ideally it's the person that's in charge of the meeting. Exactly. To yes. make sure that at the end of the meeting, that that meeting room's cleared. Exactly. Or alternatively, I guess, if you have somebody who then goes in and prepares the meeting room ready for the next meeting, it could be an office manager or a receptionist, for example. Yes, it can be. It could be, be part yes, of their yeah. responsibility just to, to double check yes, that. Yeah. And also just to make sure that he's making the right impression as well for the next person <laughs> coming in yes, yeah, and to yeah. use that meeting room. Because assessors walk past meeting rooms and they'll have a quick nosy through and if they see a pile of papers sitting on a windowsill somewhere, they'll go through that pile of papers. Mm. And there could be a non-conformity waiting for you in that pile of papers. So <laughs> you want to avoid that. <laughs> yes, and I've, I've had experience of assessors going through bins as well, actually. Oh, absolutely, and, uh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> we, used, we used to call it skip diving. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, a lot of companies might not be prepared for that, um, yes, you know, somebody yeah. rummaging around in the bin. So could you give us some hints and tips on how to prepare for an assessment? Obviously, on a day-to-day basis, you should be following your clear desk clean screen policy. Exactly, yeah. But what are the sorts of things that you should be doing to prepare for an assessment? Or even if you're just the person that's ultimately responsible for making sure that there is a clear desk and clear screen policy being complied with within the office on a daily basis. Yes, yeah. I, I think that's a good point. You sort of think about the preparation. Clear desk does actually extend to the whole of the office. It's not just mm-hmm. what's on your desk. So think about what's on your printers. Often people pick up an item from a printer that's not theirs and they'll put it to the side and say, oh, perhaps somebody will pick that up later. It belongs to them. That's the thing to be looking for before an assessment. Go around all your printers. If there's loose documents there, put them in a confidential waste bin. Just remind staff that uh, all their confidential waste should be going in confidential waste bins and not in their own local bins. So it's those sorts of things to be looking at. Uh, I suppose the other thing is to make sure that people haven't got post-it notes stuck around places that might have the old password left on it. <laughs> yes. I know it's bad habit and I know mm. we shouldn't be doing it, mm. but it's amazing how many people do it. You mm. know? So uh, people haven't quite got into the habit of uh, learning how to manage their passwords mm. correctly in that sense. Yeah. So, yeah, so don't think about clear desk as being purely what's on your desk. Clear desk extends to the whole of the office area that mm. you're working in. But clear screen is a slightly different thing. I think we misunderstand what we mean by clear screen. Lots of people seem to see it as just, oh, I'll lock my screen. That is clear screen. It's much, much more than that. It's making sure that you don't save things on your C drive, on your laptop or on your computer, uh, where only you have access to it. Some companies are now beginning to link the C drive or what's on your desktop to the network to be able to sort of uh, save information. Mm. It doesn't always happen, though. So make sure that if you've got anything on your desktop, you bring that back into a shared area. Most people got shared folders now on their servers. Bring it back into that shared area. 
that actually improves your integrity and your availability of information, which are two of the key points of security. Yes, that's um, something that you touched on in our previous podcast series on so, how to yes. implement ISO 27001. So if listeners are interested in the CIA, the confidentiality, integrity and availability, exactly, uh, yeah. Steve explains about that in a lot more detail. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. think about the integrity. If it's on your laptop, other people can't get to it. You go on holiday or perhaps you're off sick. It simply means that somebody will be working off an older document. You may have actually made some improvements to the document. They work on an older document and think about the time that might be wasted in doing that mm. because the integrity has been impacted and the availability has been impacted. So get into the habit, uh, certainly at the end of each day, downloading uh, back onto the, uh, the shared area anything you've got and, and start setting up shortcuts on your desktop. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, if you don't know how to set up a shortcut, then I'm sure your IT department are going to be able to show you how to do that. So those shortcuts will, A, ensure that the information is in the shared area, B, that you won't lose any information if your hard drive fails on your laptop. Because bear in mind, if your laptop uh, screen is full of documents, the minute that hard drive fails, you've lost all those documents. They very rarely can be recovered. Mm. So uh, that's a lot of work you've got to recover. And have you really got the time to recover that? And what kind of advice would you give to organisations that are working in open plan offices or shared office space? So it's becoming more and more popular now just to hire a desk or some office space. So obviously hot desking is is, is a lot more popular now for organisations because obviously more people are working remotely. Is there any kind of advice you would give those sorts of organisations? Yeah, I I think it's about making sure you cite yourself in a position in the office where if you're working on something confidential, you can be sure people aren't looking over your shoulders. So I know it's not always possible to do that, but uh, also be aware of some of the tools you've got available on your laptop, such as Windows L. We know Windows L will lock your laptop immediately, but the one people are not too familiar with is Windows D which simply means mm. that everything gets minimised down to your desktop. So if you're working Windows on... Windows D. Windows okay. D, yeah. yeah. So it's the Windows key is normally about the third key in on the bottom row to the left, and you just press D, it minimises everything down. You can then talk to somebody that's just come up to you, and then to get back to your work, just Windows D again, it takes you straight back to where you were before. Excellent. Top that's tips. <laughs> very, that, well, that's very, very good for anybody working in finance, anybody working in HR. Because often they're the places where they're working with confidential information that they don't really want people to see. And of course, I know that we automatically think of clear desk and clear screen in the office, Mm. but I guess it's just as important, if not more important, when you are working remotely, either working from home, or you might be on a train for a couple of hours and you think, oh, actually, I'll get a few emails done. What kind of advice would you give organisations in those situations? Well, if we think about working on public transport, one of the things that uh, people should be thinking about is a privacy screen. So privacy screen is a little filter that fits over the front of your screen and you can only view your screen being directly in front of it. So passengers around you won't be able to see what you're working on. How many times have we actually sat there seeing somebody working on something and we just can't help ourselves? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) What's he doing? (laughs) So uh, we're we're all just uh, curious beings and we Mm. just want to know what other people are doing. So if you're working on something confidential, get yourself a privacy screen. If you happen to find yourself working in a coffee shop because you're perhaps between meetings, it's not a bad thing, but position yourself in such a way that people can't see what you're doing. Go to the walls, you know, so that you've got your back to the wall and work so you can see everybody in front of you. I think I'll read too many spy books, actually. Um, A lot of it's common sense, though, isn't it? it? But I think the problem is is we don't always automatically think that way. We're not always thinking about data security. Exactly, yes. But I guess it's just changing that mindset in culture, isn't it? No matter where you're working. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's about controlling your area, controlling your space. Mm. Because if you can control your area, control your space, you then know what's happening around you and you can act accordingly. So if somebody comes across to you, perhaps to clear the tables, you can do Windows D to minimise everything uh, so people can't see what you're working on. Mm. So um, so there's often often little things. Just, Just think about your surroundings. Excellent. So final question is... 
you know, once you've created these controls for a clear desk and clear screen, how do you actually communicate that to employees and how do you actually get them to practice that? Because obviously it's not going to be something that just happens overnight. No, it does no, take that's right. time. Yeah. So any useful tips there, Steve? I, I think sometimes if you're a larger company, you can deploy security champions. And if you've got security champions, give them a little checklist perhaps to work on uh, once a week or, or once a month, whatever you feel is appropriate. Just to go around and check these things, like what's at the printers, you know, has confidential waste been thrown away properly? Just go around, see whether people are holding things in their bins. Perhaps walk around the office and see what screens have been left open when people walked away. And get these people just to encourage in a gentle way. Uh, it's not about sort of beating your colleagues up, you know, because they've left the screen open. Because <laughs> that just gets people's backs up. It's about uh, sort of turning around and saying, remember what the policy says, we need to lock our screen. Mm. Why are we locking our screen? We're not just protecting information, we're protecting our own personal log on. So that's an important thing to bear in mind. That reminds me actually, there was an organisation that I knew a few years ago and they made it a bit of a fun game. Ah, so yes, the yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, the clear desk, clear screen police yeah. were going around <laughs> <laughs> and they made it a bit of a competition between departments. Right. And the department that had the best desks, you know, yeah. best looking desks, nice and clear, clear screen and uh, clear desks got a box of heroes the chocolates oh, and yes, the, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. the infosec heroes yes, yeah and yeah. Uh, so everybody then wanted the box of heroes for <laughs> yeah. their department uh, so they made uh, a bit more fun yeah so, i've heard um, similar things where perhaps you're walking on a, a morning and you find you've got a red triangle on your desk because you've perhaps mm. uh, forgotten to do something like clear desk or, or clear screen you know so mm. there's lots of ways of doing it and i think the word fun is is the important thing Because you don't want security to be something people fear. You want something that people embrace and do it quite naturally within their their working environment. So, yeah, I mean, security champions work for big companies, smaller companies. I think it's just down to continually encouraging people, you know, that uh, if they've got up from their desk, they've walked off to make a cup of tea into another room. If they haven't got their screen, just remind them. So there are tricks, and I won't divulge whether those (laughs) tricks are because... You can't get into trouble, so let's let's not go down that route. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, but that's been great for you to share what hints and tips you can do. Uh-